Huh. Hi folks, this is Dane at Joni Guitars and uh, I had a couple of Breedloves come in the shop uh, this week and uh, one of them was just a uh, basic setup. Uh, fella actually just looking to sell it, wanted to make sure that it was playable. He had a little buzz. Um, so I, uh, I set it up for him. It, it set up really nice. Anyway, so I have another one here that's uh, at about nine uh, 64ths, uh, which is too high and don't have enough uh, saddle to take out and so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reset the neck. Uh, I'm going to get it set up for that and that will kind of explain some things about it. Breedloves are bolt-on necks uh, so I don't have to steam this out of the guitar. Uh, I could uh, steam or heat the fretboard extension and take that glue off. I think I'm going to avoid that in this case. So, um, since I put my bandsaw in the bench, into the corner of the bench, actually that's where I used to do my acoustic neck reset stuff, my little board. So I'm going to re revamp that and then get that set up. And I'll bring you back in and uh, show you what I have in mind here. Okay, so I, I have the guitar set up now. As you can see the top end of the thing here. Uh, and I will lower the camera and show you the what's what's going on here. It's very simply just a board screwed to the side of my bench that enables me to clamp the body of the guitar uh, to the bench. And the guitar just sits on a stool that's padded. But the neck is not dovetailed and is bolted on. And uh, if you've seen any of my other neck reset videos, and if you haven't, I suggest you go back and watch uh, one or two or three or however many other. Uh, it's not uncommon at all to chamfer uh, or, or relieve the wood right from the very edge of the, the neck heel uh, into the dovetail in order to have less material at the heel. And I'll reposition the camera here. I think this might benefit from some visual aid. There we go. So, um, from this outside edge, you would leave, say, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch of material, and then you would recess or carve some material away to the dovetail. That creates a recess in there that uh, makes it much more uh, easy to to sand. Um, uh, I was just looking for something that I could do a quick little demo with, but I don't want to drag something nasty in here. Anyway, you put a piece of sandpaper, we call it flossing. Uh, basically, now you can see that this neck is, is moving up and down here too, uh, because the tongue is still glued onto the guitar. Um, any neck reset, you, you do not take material from this very point up here. You only take material here. And uh, so my plan is since there's already a recess up in here, it won't take that much to remove some material here. Um, normally, I was trying to peel a piece of masking tape off my bench here a second ago. Typically, you just put a piece, and I'll just fold this in half so it's not dragging. Okay, you put a piece of sandpaper in the joint, and then you, you put pressure on this end and you pull it out. Now I have glue sticking me here, tape glue, okay? And that's how you remove material from the, the heel end and not the top edge. Uh, I'm going to use a, a uh, flush cut saw and come in here and just take it right off the end and then about halfway up I'll, I'll make a cut. I'm also going to put tape on the guitar so I don't drag um, the saw. This saw will not cut, but uh, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally scratch anything. So that's the idea. I hope that whatever I hope my explanation is making sense to you.
And th you know what else I noticed on these two breed loads? They were both string through on the bridge. They don't, they don't go into the body with bridge pins. The strings go through the bridge, which uh, is something that I'm, I'm really not a fan of. Um, for one thing, right now I have strings on this guitar, and if they were pinned into the bridge, I would have just pulled the pins out and wound the strings up around the pig head, got them, gotten them out of my way. Um, so I have strings in there, and I'm not really that happy about that. And I, yeah, I probably should have just pulled them off and put new strings on. But I'm just thinking this is going to be a pretty quick little fix here for for my customer. And so here you go. I should. I'm going to measure the thickness of this blade. All right, the thickness of the blade on this little saw is 15 thousandths. And the thickness of the tape is five thousandths, four thousandths. So between the blade and the tape, I'm going to be taking twenty thousandths off of here. And I think that's a pretty good start uh, in getting my neck tip back. So um, go ahead and zoom that in again. So I should be taking twenty thou. Trying to hold the heel down and also have, have the saw down so I'm not accidentally running up the side of the neck here. Tearing my tape though. May have to redo the tape. It is catching the tape, so I don't want to take a chance scratching my finish here. I got a piece of tape stuck under here on this side, so I got to get it off. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to retape it, and I'm just going to go straight to. Uh, no, let's just dust. Okay. Just going to go straight to uh, some sandpaper and start pulling paper out instead of using the saw. I don't want to take any chances. It'll probably take me longer. Uh, I know it'll take me longer, but I don't want to take a chance on making some damage in this finish here. Oh, I bring you back in for a little bit of this. This is uh, not something I'm going to film a lot of because it's extremely tedious. Uh, so, I happen to have a piece of 100 grit. It's uh, just a half of a sticky disc. 100 grit still has a little paper on the back, so it's slick. And uh, and then I change the tape out. And so I'm not going. And I'll start on this side. So you can see it. I'm not going all the way up to the top here. I don't want to ever take any material out of there. So I'm starting here and about in the center. And then um, I'm just pulling it straight out. Now I'm pulling pressure back to the body where I could push down here. So we just, just want to pull right out of here. And that's, now one other thing I should notice, I'm not pulling up. You don't want to pull up. You want to pull straight out or even down. Because if you pull up, you're going to round this 
this edge off. You're going to round it up that way and you don't want to do that. Uh, this is the same principle once you get a dovetail fit, but this being a bolt-on, we don't need to deal with any of that dovetail stuff, which is, I'm hoping, is going to be pretty nice. When I first pulled the bolts out of this, I was thinking maybe, just maybe, they had taken a, a you know, play out of the the Taylor uh, playbook and had made the tongue just a bolt in two and it was a set of shims in here that you could rotate the neck with, but no such luck. So I'm removing material from the heel. And uh, one thing before I, oops, one thing before I turn the camera off um, and just continue doing this is It'll be a little bit of a nuisance, but it'll be a lot easier than trying to refit a dovetail in that every so often I can just take it out of the, the clamps here and uh, pull the tape out and actually run the bolt in and snug it up and see what my progress is. Um, I can see here, if I keep the dust out, I need to get a little towel so I can get the dust out here, but I can keep pulling this neck back just as I go and see what my progress is as far as my fit. Right now, right now I'm I'm kind of open uh, at the end here, and you can see I have done very little, a little teeny bit of saw work, and that, and so I think that if I just get this to lay down flat in here, um, my uh, my joint's going to pull back uh, pretty good already. So I'm just going to continue to do that. And it's just kind of a fiddle fart and uh, check as you go kind of a process. Um, I actually have a bit to take out of here, so I wasn't concerned about trying to dial in exactly what I needed to remove. I will work on this for a little bit, and then I will put a bolt in there and just check it out and see where things are lining up at. Okay, so I just uh, sanded on that for a bit, and then I uh, took it out of the, the clamps here it over, tighten the bolts up, and uh, tighten the strings up on it, and drop down about uh, 264 ths maybe just a little more than that. So I'm sitting just above 664 ths on the string action at the 12th fret. So I'm just going to keep on keeping on here, and uh, continue to do what I've been doing, and which is uh, all I've really done. You saw the initial, just a little cut with the saw, and then I've just been using the paper. Now what I have noticed is that I was getting, I was binding up here somewhat, right at the very top. Now of course I'm not going to go up here because I just, that neck is not going to move the, the uh, fretboard extension. So I've been, and I left the bolts in this time too actually, because there's, it's just a well up in there and it doesn't matter. Um, but I, you know, I just did a little bit, a little farther up so that I was able to feather that it was binding right there and it was staying open down here. So just so you know what, what I'm encountering here. Um, okay, I am just going to keep at it. I've got actually when I once I had the bolts and everything I have just the slightest little gap right here at the very bottom where I made that initial saw cut and I have the same thing over on the other side. So what I'm going to do is take enough of this out to where all of that blends together and uh, and we should be golden. All right, I got 24, 24 thousandths goes in there pretty freely, and so I'm going to say I've got somewhere 20, 26, 28 thousandths uh, is what that actually opened up to. Uh, so not a whole lot more than what the tape and the saw was together. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not positive this is going to be perfect at this point. Uh, I got a feeling I'm going to be really close, so I'm going to take it out of the clamps again, take it over and uh, tighten the bolts up, string it up, and uh, see what we have. All right, so took it out for a second time, took it over to the bench, tightened the uh, bolts up, and um, I'm still a little shy where I want to be. I, I was 
really hovering right above 564 uh, on that 12th fret fatty and then I uh, I just checked the neck relief and it was really flat and it didn't buzz at all it played really nicely uh, but if, um, if I ever need to put a little relief in this neck I'm gonna I'm gonna want this neck tilted back a little bit because I don't want uh, I don't want to buzz, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and continue to sand on it. And the other thing is, you can't see it on this side. I still have just a ever slight uh, bit of a gap at this, just this little corner. Not even at the corner, just up a little bit where I, I, I guess I let that saw right up a little bit right there. So anyway, uh, I think it needs it. it. It's certainly not going to hurt it to come down that far. I'm going to do, I've been using 80 grit or 100 grit rather <coughs> this uh, this purple um, disc 5 inch sticky disc I'm going to uh, go find something a little finer maybe a 120 or 150 and uh, and just do the rest of it with that alright so I had a piece of sticky bag 180 and I cut a strip off of that This finer grit's definitely not taking anything. So I'm going to go back to my 100 grit, and it's 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 worn. is the uh, Breedlove uh, that uh, we did the neck reset on. Um, it'll be right here on the tail end of the neck reset stuff, so I'm sure I don't need to explain that again. Um, okay, uh, we had the, the reset. I'm down to uh, uh, 464, so we're shy less than that. I should just check that again. Actually, yep, just a fuzz under 464 on the high E string, 564 on the low E string. Um, from, uh, I'm thinking, I mentioned it was either 7 or 9. Uh, 64 said it was at, I think it was 9. Anyway, and then uh, I did a crack repair in the finish in the top here. I'll come in close. For that, you can see the crack. It's or still see the you know where the crack was. 
Anyway, and I'm positive it's not in the wood because I was in, this, in the guitar with a mirror uh, looking for any kind of crack in the top, shining light down directly on top of that crack, uh, not seeing any light in, inside the guitar and then also shining light in the guitar up through the crack. And then the other reason I don't think it was in the wood is because the actual crack does not finish the grain line, follow, excuse me, does not follow the grain line. Crack in the finish does not follow the grain line. Anyway, so that's the wrap up on the uh, Breedlove and uh, these are pretty nice guitars. I'm not, not a fan of top loading bridges in both of these that I had in the shop recently. Uh, had top loading bridges, I'm not sure if that's what they do all the time. I'm not, uh, not that familiar with the Breedlove models, other than they all come stock, or at least all the ones I know of come stock with the Bridge Doctor. So that's it, that's the wrap, and uh, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Take care folks, thanks for watching. Thank you.